Um, Dr. White is the Director of Education at the Museum of Paleontology at the University of California, Berkeley, where she develops learning materials and programs for diverse audiences on evolution, the fossil record, the processes of science and global change. Prior to her arrival um, at, <clears throat> prior to her arrival at Berkeley in 2012, Dr. White had an action packed 22 year career at San Francisco State University, where she held multiple high level administrative positions, including Associate Dean of Gra the Graduate Division, where she had a tremendous impact on the inclusion of women and scholars of color in the geosciences. She also spent many years developing and implementing a variety of K through 12 and university level engagement programs that provide access and exposure to students from marginalized and underserved backgrounds in STEM. A micropaleontologist by training, Dr. White was featured in a three part PBS special in 2015 called Making North America, which I just learned about last night and I can't wait to find and stream myself. She's a fellow of the California Academy of Sciences and the Geological Society of America. And she's also on the board of the National Association of Black Geoscientists. Throughout her impressive career, Dr. White has been the recipient of numerous prestigious awards, including the GSA Bromery Award for Minorities. And she currently chairs the AGU DNI Advisory Committee, where she works with a powerful team to create a culture that embraces belonging, access, justice, equity, diversity and inclusiveness in the geosciences. We are so thankful for all Dr. White has done and continues to do to mitigate barriers and to open doors for women and other marginalized groups in STEM. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. White. Thank you, Catalina. What a wonderful introduction. And it's so great to be here. Can you all hear me okay? All right. Well, I just I want to say a special hello to Sarah Colsar and Mona Bell. We had the good fortune to work together with a larger group of individuals really focused on changing the culture in ocean science. And, you know, and I should share that I'm a bit of an accidental activist, even though I grew up in this family uh, that was very much focused on social justice and change. My parents met at San Francisco State University in the 1950s. And then my late father uh, went on to be faculty at San Francisco State and Dean of Undergraduate Studies during the year that the university went on strike. And he was on strike to uh, really uh, cultivate more programs, uh, demand more programs uh, that reflected the life experiences of students of color. So as a young child in the 60s, I remember these protests on TV and seeing all of the commotion and what have you, uh, and being part of this activist family that's also very outgoing, I was more of a, um, of a shy member of the family and I was more into arts, uh, the arts and photography than I was in science. In fact, my first uh, ambition uh, professionally was to be the black female Ansel Adams. You know, I was gonna be this awesome nature photographer and what led me to my first geology course as an undergraduate at San Francisco State uh, was really wanting to learn more about the landscape uh, so I could up my skill, you know, in um, nature photography. So I got bitten by the geoscience bug as soon as I took my first class, uh, but also wanted to share that something that made a difference for me uh, as, a, um, as a young career, as an early career, as a, as a student uh, of geoscience was being part of a cohort really from the very beginning. So sure, I have lots of examples I can share about isolation uh, in the major as an African-American woman, uh, but I was fortunate to uh, intern at the US Geological Survey at a time when uh, there were a number of us that were hired you know, as part of a diversity program as students. And I've found myself over the years using some elements of that model you know, to keep individuals together and supported uh, and really guided uh, and try to include a sense of belonging, you know, as we bring individuals along because there's just way too much isolation um, in a lot of what we do. Uh, but some of the main points I wanted to share that are part of my own journey uh, is even if you think that you don't want to prioritize 
uh, DEI. There's still a lot of pressures as a scientist to be part uh, of your content area. And mine really does straddle a number of areas. Uh, as Catalina mentioned, um, my primary training is in paleontology, uh, uh, but I'm also uh, very much a part of the Ocean Sciences Network, uh, in addition to solid earth uh, geoscience. And there are really some unique aspects to each of those disciplines that have their own sets of barriers, but there's some similarities as well, particularly when it comes to just access and preventing roadblocks, whether you're talking about access on ships or being able to go to uh, some uh, unique kinds of paleontological areas. Uh, and so as I've uh, designed programs over the years uh, that initially were really focused on pre-college students, exciting them about opportunities in geoscience and ocean science. I think I was just trying to be an ambassador uh, for the field, uh, sort of like the Pied Piper, you know, just follow me along and uh, hope you can have, you know, an exciting career as well, you know, not realizing uh, some during some of those early years how important it is to put uh, structures in place so that uh, young people and early career scientists can feel as if they belong and that it's okay to bring aspects of their identity and their culture uh, into uh, whatever science discipline uh, that it is. And so uh, some of these different ways of thinking um, about inclusion and embracing culture, you know, being very impactful and intentional when we design components of DEI programs uh, has brought me to a point where I'm collaborating uh, with additional individuals to uh, design a program called Voices. So Voices of Integrating Culture in Our Science. Uh, and we were excited to have our first workshop here at AGU on Sunday. And so we're really trying to establish uh, ways that that one really in any discipline can help establish uh, that sense of place and security and identity and belonging in a discipline, whether it be ocean science, the paleontological sciences or the solid earth uh, sciences, geosciences. So, so thank you again for allowing me to uh, be part of this charrette and I look forward to any questions you might have. Dr. White, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. And I so much look forward to our discussion in just a bit.